the new Lord Rector at the University of Glasgow has been elected by the student population. And though Dr. Ghassan Abu Sita is a surgeon, he manages to sound like some radical socialist. And in the words of the immortal Bobby Sands, our revenge will be the laughter of our children. Hasta la victoria siempre. Oh dear, and it gets worse. Dr. Gassan was barred from Germany this week over safety concerns and fears for public order. Possibly because he's currently under investigation by the actual adults at the University of Glasgow for praising terrorists. Sitting next to one at a memorial and tearfully eulogising a terror group leader whose organisation was later involved in the October 7 massacre. GB News host Darren Grimes joins me now. Darren, what is going on in Glasgow? Oh, absolutely, Rita. I mean, Gasson Abu Sitter, he could do with sitting the hell down, couldn't he? Because this is a man who <laughs> represents, I would argue, the, some of the most virulent, hard left, uh, vile politics that we've seen unleashed across the West since October the 7th. I mean, I look at this this hard left vagabond, right, and I just feel utter despair for the state of, of Britain's universities. They really have become breeding grounds for some of the most virulent Jew hate and terror eulogising. You know, this is a man that's viewed as too much for Germany, but he's somehow all right for the student population of Glasgow. Now, it's got me scratching my head because this chap clearly has more red flags, Rita, than a May Day parade in Moscow, right? Barred from Germany, all right for Glasgow. This isn't for nicking towels from a hotel room, right? This is for being a bit too vocal in a way that made the authorities ponder if he's the kind of fella that they want given speeches in Deutschland, right? Not the usual ter tourist experience there to sit next to terrorists and uh, be comfortable in their company and all too vocal in their support, right? Uh, they've been digging through, basically, the comments that he's made over his career, waxing lyrical about folks that, frankly, most would cross the street to avoid. There was this Ahmed Jara chap who's known for anything other than peace-loving activities, and it's not the best look. Here's a man that's so clearly blinded by hatred of Israel, that murder becomes justifiable in the name of a cause. Let's not forget that the IRA that he quotes was responsible for the murder of scores of, of innocent men, women mm -hmm. and children here on mainland Britain. And being elected as rector, it's not like winning a raffle at a church fete. This is a significant role with influence over the student body, right? So these students, I think, need to take a good hard look in the mirror and a good hard look at this man's so-called work, because I doubt they're all steeped in loathing in the same way he is. This is a bloke that's been hobnobbing with plane hijackers and handing out attaboys to terrorists in a, in a position now where he's supposed to be representing the best interests of students. What about the Jewish students there, Rita? That's what I want to know. Yes. Well, uh, they must not be feeling very welcome at that campus at all because the, he's elected by the student population. Now, I want to talk to you about former Cabinet Minister Braverman. Um, you know I like her. I think she should be the leader. She should be Prime Minister. And she is causing headaches for the current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. She says as long as he is PM, the UK will not leave the European Convention on Human Rights. The PM was threatening to do that after the ECHR ruled that inaction on climate change could be considered a breach of human rights. Now, why is the UK a party to this convention, Darren, and, and does it threaten a, a nation's sovereignty? Absolutely it does, because now we have one of the rights enshrined by the European Court as being action on climate change, Rita. So these are activist judges, it's an activist judiciary that puts forward so-called rights, which basically represent their views, and they force governments who are party to this 
this agreement, the ECHR, to actually follow out its political demands. I would argue that whilst Britain is party to the ECHR, we cannot have border controls and we certainly cannot have common sense and rationality when it comes to the net zero nuttiness. I would I really think it is time that we do leave. I think it's a it's a, people who argue that the United Kingdom it cannot have human rights without this foreign court. Look across the world at Australia, New Zealand, Canada. They don't have jurisdiction of foreign courts lecturing them on what they can and cannot do. Yet you all manage to have human rights. You all manage to basically enshrine everything that the United Kingdom has stood for throughout its history, stretching back almost a thousand years to the Magna Carta. Are we really suggesting that the United Kingdom doesn't know a thing or two? about human rights and enshrining rights in law this is a, it, it's an absurdity we must be able to control our own borders we must be able to do what you guys did in stopping the small boats in stopping rampant illegal migration to your shores because we're seeing the consequences of inaction and the consequences of inaction, dare I say, are the kinds of things that we've seen happen on our streets since October 7th, the kind of things that we saw outside the Sydney Opera House, the kind of things that we've seen week in, week out uh, in the streets of London. I really do agree completely with Suella Braverman. I think Rishi Sunak is a weak prime minister. I think there are far too many in that mm -hmm. cabinet who are too scared of actually governing for themselves and being responsible for themselves and they would be quite happy actually to say well we can't have border controls we can't have robust action on these points because the European Court forbade it so because that takes accountability away from these weak minded weak willed politicians and that's what I find so reprehensible that's... so yes we do need strong action and leadership from the likes of Suella Braverman and this is why you had a national vote. You, you, you had a vote and the people backed Brexit and it seems like that's never been fully implemented, the spirit of, of, of that vote. Now, before you go, we have to talk about Prince Harry. It's been a while and uh, there's news that he's working on a new documentary, a new project for Netflix. They call it a docu-series, but really, Darren, it's a reality show like the the last one they did that was just mind-numbingly boring this one though is on a topic that prince harry is actually knowledgeable about polo but is there a massive market for documentaries on on polo darren who's going to watch this well absolutely there, there clearly isn't a market for that you know polo it, it, it's quite a niche sport i don't think it's overwhelmingly popular anywhere in the world really it's basically what i would describe as a sort of a, a penchant for posh people but look i i this is clearly an attempt to create reality television by masquerading as a documentary on on polo yes. when actually it's a documentary on these two and uh, their penchant for being in the press i i would just you know in this country now rita we hit we're hearing because as you well know the royal family are going through their own problems at the moment with the uh his Majesty King Charles III and, of course, the Princess of Wales out of action after cancer diagnosis. And some people are suggesting that we bring back Prince Harry to the United Kingdom in order to help share the burden. Now, I'm sorry, but whilst he was here, he didn't want to share the burden, did he? Meghan Markle didn't like rainy charity galas and good old blighty. She didn't like a little bit of selfless charitable obligation because they care more about press trinkets and getting money from Netflix and all of these other dirty things, selling out their family in order to sell a book that he received quite the helpful advance over. Oh, Rita, they make my skin crawl. This isn't about Polo. This is about the prince. And this isn't about any th kind of charitable endeavour. This is about Meghan Markle. They both put themselves first and they always have and they always will. I want nothing more to do with them. I'm delighted that they continue to lose their appeals to have uh, the United Kingdom taxpayer basically be responsible for their security whilst they're here. They can pay for it themselves. They're making a pretty penny reader. I just, honestly, they, the two of them 
need to be as far away from Britain as possible. And if this acts as a deterrent from them actually coming here, well, don't count on me being too upset. I'll tell you that for free. Well, you may have to accept them back because there's a court case in the US at the moment uh, wanting to see if Prince Harry lied on his uh, visa application, I think it is, about his uh, illicit drug use. And uh, Donald yep. Trump has indicated that he is open to deporting Prince Harry <laughs> at some point. So if that happens, uh, we shall speak about it at length. Darren Grimes, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks very much, Rita.